Hello everyone, this is John Michael, also known as Pyro Falcon, here to give you a tip for the Sims 3 Pets expansion. My favorite part of the expansion has been the design and creation of your own pet's coats, the markings, that kind of thing. Now you can do these coats um, at any time during the game itself, during you know when you're interacting with your families, by selecting your pet. But uh, I'll demonstrate the tools here in Create a Sim where it's you know a little easier to get everything situated. So if you are in Create a Sim, all you have to do is click this button here, which is Add a Sim or Pet. And then you can select whether to add a horse, a dog, or a cat. Um, with uh, the horses, with well, with any of the three animals, you can add any of these markings. The controls are basically the same, but uh, just for now, we will add a dog. All right, here we see our latest cute doggy here. Um, he looks kind of realistic with his big floppy ears and whitish coat, and we are going to make a victim out of him by the time we're done with this video tip. Now this first section shows his name, his gender, uh, the age of your pet. We're not going to go over any of those options. You can see those in other parts of the guide. Um, and you can you know play with those to your heart's content. Uh, this video tip is only to talk about the markings. Um, if you want to make your own custom breed, the best thing you could do is click the second button. This is the breeds button. This shows all the breeds that ship with the game. They're all named. They are real dogs, real breeds. Um, with real markings, etc., etc. Uh, you can kind of look through here, mouse over. Like, here's the French Bulldog. Here's an Italian Greyhound. Clicking any of these brings up not just their markings, but their physical attributes as well. But if you're going to make something from scratch, the best thing to do is go to the top left breed. That is Create Dog. Um, it's basically the name of the breed is Create Dog. And uh, you can see he's just an all gray dog with basically fully neutral features, fully neutral pro uh, proportions. Um, it's the best way to start off unless you're intentionally just wanting to tweak um, an existing breed. So here we have our create dog. Now we're going to go to our third button here, which is the coat button. And from here, it shows you all the different coats in the game, again, that are currently shipping. Uh, you can save your own custom coats and breeds once you're done and we'll show you how to do that at the end of this tip as well so right now we just have this plain gray dog these buttons down here allow you to change the color as you can see uh, once again it's probably best to just stick with a white or gray when you're just uh, starting off and now we will get to the actual fun part this little button right here when you mouse over it says change color that will change color of the entire uh, fur here the entire coat you can change to any of these well i was going to say realistic but clearly a couple of these are not totally realistic because there's clifford apparently but you can click the color wheel and you can also change it to any of these colors you darn well please some of these are awfully disturbing and we're going to make him even worse than that trust me all right so here again we have the plain white dog um this button is the magic button, so to speak. This goes into advanced mode. This lets us do all the fun little tricks. So we're going to go ahead and click that. All right. Now, uh, this may look intimidating if you've never worked with graphics before. Um, if you have, if you're a Photoshop veteran or a GIMP veteran, then this will probably be nothing to you. Uh, you'll probably be able to figure this out on your own. But um, if you've never worked with any sort of... Uh, image editing software before this is really simple the first concept you have to worry about is over here this panel is called the layering panel the way layers work in graphics is basically it's like a stenciled bit of paper um, you know for every layer of paper you put on top of another layer it covers certain things and it leaves other things uncovered you'll see what that means in a moment but the layer the order of the layers is very important uh, you can use different, uh, the, the tools are easy to use, so you'll be able to move the layers around if you make a mistake. And of course, down here, you have your undo and redo buttons, which will come in very handy when you're starting off. So, for your dog here, you can click any of these sections here. See, so here's the head, here's the back, the tail, the full body, the belly, the legs, and the chest. You can click any of those body parts to work on that body part. So right now we're going to work on the full body only because just to demonstrate how it works. If And, uh, okay, your first selections are over here in this little scroll 
um, scrolly wheel thing. And you can click any of these to instantly make the change. For example, the bottom one, or the one in the bottom left corner, immediately paints your dog to look like a skeleton. It's weird. It's great for freaking people out. I personally can't stand it. But the one in the top left is a neutral, except for the chest. And you can see any change I'm doing here to the left is changing the layer on the right. This layer, since it's bright uh, blue, is the one we are currently working with. This one, which is the base layer, the main coat layer, is grayed out because that's the one we are not working with. But we can change that at any time. So, um, okay. So all of these, basically, for the full body, allows you to quickly add specific full body markings. It's kind of obvious, I know. But uh, you can see how it's changing every portion of his body, no matter which one I'm clicking here. But we want to do something a little bit more customized. So the first thing we're going to do is delete this layer. This is good if you uh, click something you don't mean to click or you change your mind completely and want it to be gone. You just make sure you have the, la the layer selected over here on the right side. Then you click the trash can button here to delete the layer. And now we're back to our all white dog. And again, you can undo it if you make a mistake or redo it if you change your mind back. Pretty simple stuff. So let's start by giving him a back marking. You can either click his back, you can, should be able to see how it's highlighting there, or you can click his back on this little, um, I guess, doggy map, so to speak, in the top left corner. So we'll select his back, and now you can see all the markings, yet again, are listed here. Now, everything in this first tab, or these five listed right here, are the markings that the game ships with, but those are not the ones you were stuck with. The second tab allows you to see all the markings that are in the game, all the types of markings that you're working with, and uh, you can further customize it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second tab here. Now you see that the doggy map changes to what honestly looks like a doggy rug, which is just terrible and hilarious for people like me. So, uh, and then you can scroll down here, all these markings. Uh, some are symmetrical or spotty or, you know, are realistic, some like these are not. So uh, we can add, for example, a butterfly tattoo essentially to his back. I don't feel like messing him up quite that badly at the moment, but we are going to give him a five leaf clover. All right, so what we want to do is we want to add this clover pattern, but as you can see, we don't have any layers here right now. So the first thing we have to do is add a new layer. Now, every individual marking you add must be its own layer. And um, honestly, when you first start out, you'll probably forget to do that a couple times. It's no big deal. Again, that's what the undo button is for. But to add a new layer, just go to this layers panel and click the plus button right here. See this new layer is added. There's no symbol right here because it's obviously a new layer and we haven't chosen to put anything there yet. So let's say we'll add this um, clover. So all you do is click the clover and then it appears on his back. Just like that. Now over here on the doggy rug map, you can actually grab the layer and move it around and you can see how that's moving around on his body. You can put it wherever you want. So I could even spin the dog forward so he faces the camera and I could put the mark directly on his face to an extent. Now you can't put anything on his chest from this specific area, but uh, there are chest markings. And again, we will work with that in just a bit. But for now, we're gonna put it right on his back. I'm gonna put this clover on his back right about there. Now, of course, right now you can see it's brown, but you can change the color. All you have to do is click this button over here. It's change the color, or the, <laughs> the button is called change color. It's this little button over here on the right side. Now these five buttons are the default uh, fur colors you can add. So you can do quickly changing it black, brown, gray, that kind of thing. But if you click the change color button, once again, you can change exactly how it looks even by individual points. You can see the uh, marking change in real time. So for example, since we want the main color to be green because I want this dog to have a serious identity crisis, all you do is do that. Then you can select a different part. Um, I kind of like this, if that's what I think it is. Yeah, I actually like that as white. So we're gonna undo that. 
Let's see. Whoops. All right, let's try that again. All right, the main color will be a dark foresty brown. And then this color will remain white. This color will be also green, but it will be a different shade, a lighter shade. And the center part will be, oh, let's make it greenish blue, like an aqua. Because once again, I am screwing up this dog's personal identity. So there we go. Now we have this bizarre five leaf clover on his back that he probably wishes he doesn't have. All right, now here's the problem I meant with layers. Now, since we're done with his back, let's say I wanted to add another layer like this stupid butterfly. If I click the butterfly, you notice that my uh, clover is gone. That's because, like I said, um, the layer, you have to make a new layer for every marking. So since I screwed up, I just hit undo. We're back here with the clover. And now if I want to add a butterfly on it, I have to hit the plus button here. That adds a new layer. Now I can click the butterfly and you can see the butterfly is laying on top of the clover. And then once again, I'll demonstrate the way the layers work. Um, because I picked the butterfly second, it is laying on top of the clover. And you can see that demonstrated here in the uh, layers panel because the butterfly is on top of the clover. But if you want to change the order of this, all you have to do, you see these little bumps on the right side of the panel you can click and drag that to change the location of the layer. So here I just swap them. So now as you can see on our dog, the green uh, clover is sitting on top of the brown butterfly. You can change the layers whenever you want, however you want to make any sort of order you want. Now I'm gonna delete that butterfly because I don't want that there. That was just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so we have our dog green clover on his back. Let's start messing with his paws now. We'll give him pink paws because, I don't know, like I said, I want him to have a serious identity crisis. So we make a new layer. And then again, you can either click his paws or you can switch back to the regions map and pick it on the doggy map. For me, it's faster just to click the uh, body part just because my mouse is down here anyway. So we're going to work with his right front paw. Just click that. And once again, you can go to the markings. Now I'll show you here how the layering effect can work for you. Let's say you have just this giant spot. Let's go to the top left. So now we have our marking here. We move that to the paw. See how his entire leg is now brown. We're gonna leave that brown for a second. Now I'm gonna click add new layer. So I'm still working with the same body part and I'm gonna pick a slightly different marking here put that on top right at the edge of his paw and I'm gonna turn this one pink and you can see he now has a pink stripe in the middle of his brown leg that is the purpose of the layering effects so what you can do fact let me make sure oh yeah and just like um when you make textures for furniture and such you can actually drag colors so if i wanted this entire marking to be this pink all i have to do is click and drag this pink on top of there and now the entire thing is pink simple as that so now we're going to move this around a little bit make sure it's perfect i don't want it to cover the whole thing oh there we go there we go there we go there we go right there so now the top part of his arm is uh, brown, or not arm, but leg. The top part of his leg is brown, bottom part is pink, and his paw is white. He's already looking really confused. It's working perfectly. So you can just go and um, do this for the rest of the dog. Um, for paws, I tend to like uh, shortcutting it. I don't usually have this much control over it. So you can just click add new layer, click back to your first region, click the body part in question, then you can scroll through these, uh, add whatever you want, and then you can, again, just recolor it however you want. So for here, I've now given them a giant blue uh, front left leg that totally doesn't match. He's totally asymmetrical now. He looks horrible, which is exactly the point. We're going to keep going here. And again, you just go through however you wish. Um, give them whatever stripes or markings you want uh, thankfully the game does not understand 
you know, ugliness versus beauty. So you can do whatever you want to your pets and no one will like you or hate you any more or less other than the people that you may share this with and make their eyes bleed. Although that can be arguably worth it. And at this point, I'm sure all of you can tell I am blathering like an idiot. But that is what I do. Ah, see, I just did it again without thinking. I just started changing his chest and it undid my tail change because I forgot to make a new layer. So we just undo a couple times. There we go, add new layer. Ah, and I forgot to do his uh, leg correctly, whoops. Sometimes hard to remember all this stuff. Okay, add new layer. Go with that leg, make it that. Now let's give him a little bit of symmetry. We'll make that one pink as well, a pink foot. Then add new layer. What color haven't I used? I haven't used red. Let's give him a really deep red color for this. All right. There we go. Okay, add new layer. I'm not sure what the maximum number of layers are, but it's way more than you will probably ever use. Uh, so, you, you know, you've got plenty to work with here. The only thing you can't do is add a custom marking to the chest, unfortunately. But you can, or rather, I should say you can't add one of these markings to the chest. But you can take one of the chest markings that the game has and then recolor it for your own purposes. Like that. All right, just because I'm a jerk, I think I'm going to give him one last marking and give him some tiger stripes on the back of his neck. Let's see, you can scroll through here. That'll work. Okay. And let's see, what color haven't I used from the rainbow? I haven't used orange. Let's give him an orange stripe here. There we go. And now our dog looks like he lost a fight to a Sherman Williams paint store. Oh, wait, one more. I always love doing this. Oh, yeah, I, I haven't demonstrated the one thing yet. Okay, I'm putting a star directly on his face, but you can see that it's sort of not looking very star-like because of the size of it. After you place a marking, you can click and drag these little boxes here on the doggy map to change the scale of the marking. So there I made this ridiculously tiny one. I'm trying to get the star directly over his eye and I almost just had it. There we go. So now he's got a bizarre star looking mark on his eye. Oops, I just made it worse, didn't I? It's kind of tricky to do this. It's probably, it sort of makes me wish, there we go. It makes me wish they uh, had the, allowed you to drag the markings like they, like you could um, drag parts in Spore. All right, so we're gonna change the star on his eye to, too bad you can't do a random color either. That'd be kind of cool. Let's see, forest green. Uh... There we go, that's kind of an aqua fresh looking color. All right, that works. So now we have our dog right there. All right, now when you're ready to um, advance, oh, well, I, the save button, I guess, should be your next uh, thing. So uh, you can click save right here. It's above the change color over here. And it adds the breed permanently right here. Now you can bring it up uh, and load it anytime you want. Um, you can basically tweak it later, save a, even a new copy of it with just a slight tweak. Like if, say I wanted to load this up and just change all the colors to brown. 
so it looks at least slightly more natural. I could just click that button, load that up, and then I'd be able to make my changes. But whenever you're ready to continue, once you're done here, click this button. This is basic mode. That goes back to the screen we were just at. And now you are basically done. You can change the name. You can do whatever. Change the accessories. Give them a collar. Man's best friend right there. Now when you're ready to share it, all you have to do is go down to his picture down here in the bar, click the more button, which is the button with three dots, and click the second icon here, which is share pet. And you can name him. I'm going to call him the IGN Freak 3. Enter a description. Hit the check. And now, once you're on your Sims 3 launcher, you can actually upload them to the internet. So anyone can download them. And in fact, if you go to uh, the Sims 3 official website, search for user Pyro Falcon, that's P-Y-R-O-F-A-L-K-O-N, you will be able to download your very own version of the Sims 3 freak. One final note. Um, when your pet mates with other pets of the same species and produces offspring, there is every chance that the offspring will have some sort of mix of the markings because DNA is at play. So now that I have the IGN Freak 3 here, if I start breeding them with other dogs, then you never know what I can come up with. Maybe I'll get a dog that only has the star. Maybe I'll have a dog that has everything except a different coat color. You know, it, who knows? The possibilities are endless, and then you can save the offspring as its own breed. And, you know, again, all these breeds can be uploaded at any time to thesims3.com to be downloaded by strangers, friends, and anyone else who has the game. So, that, uh, that will do it for this video tip. And uh, thanks, know. everyone, for checking it out. I hope to see some uh, unusual breeds. And uh, if you have anything to share, let me know on YouTube, and I'll check them out, maybe even feature you in a video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.